Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. In this episode, in the long-term series, long-term review of the Honda Transalp 750, I'm going to be installing some off-road accessories for protection and performance. So it's going to be a pretty simple episode, just kind of showing you uh, what I'm changing on the bike to get it ready for off-road adventure riding. So this is not really a review of the parts that I'm showing. It's really just to show you kind of the parts that I chose uh, to outfit this bike. Now I did reach out to uh, these companies that I'm about to show uh, for these parts. And I said, hey, I'm doing a series on the Transalp. Would you like to feature your parts on it? But I picked the companies that I wanted to work with because I know they're great products because I've used them before. So that's how this goes. So I did not pay for these products. I always want to be really clear and transparent about that. And I'm really grateful to those companies, uh, to these companies for stepping up and helping out with the bike build. Uh, because as you know, I really purchased a bike like this for content. So to make it affordable for me to be able to do this and then resell the bike in six or nine months, it really helps if I don't have to um, sink a lot more money into it after the purchase. So thank you uh, to all the companies helping with this. So right now, if we take a look at the bike, it's 100% bone stock. All I did was I did the first ride uh, impressions video on and off road. People got upset because I threw the bike on its side. But again, this is an adventure bike. I'm trying to test it as an adventure bike, not just a road bike, okay? So Dunlop sent out their Trailmax Raid tires. Um, I've really been wanting to test these over a longer term. I did get to ride them on a CF Moto demo bike for about, well, less than 100 miles. So I don't have much experience with them. I liked them from the first impression. So I'm really looking forward to being able to test these out. So thank you Dunlop for that. They seem like they're gonna be a pretty great 50-50 tire. I went to uh, Bark Busters uh, for the hand guards. These are specific for the Transalp. So the hardware and the mounting for the, the bar and weights and everything is specific for the bike. And I got the Storm Guards, which are a little bit better wind protection because we're going into winter. Outback Motortech sent their crash bar system. You can see some of the hardware here. And they also sent their skid plate. So the skid plate and the crash bars well, all this stuff is important, but these are these are critical right here and the handguards because as we know, if we look at the Transalp engine, and I've showed this, but here's the problem, right? I mean, that is a big liability. So having a four millimeter thick skid plate with good mounting points is essential on this bike. And the crash bars look really awesome too. So we're going to go ahead and get these mounted up in the course of this video and see how they turn out. Um, Alt Rider, I've been working, or I've been using Alt Rider parts for a very long time on a lot of different bikes that I've owned, even long before I did YouTube, of course. They sent out their Adventure 2 foot pegs, so I haven't put the uh, cleats in yet, so you don't see the, the metal cleats there. But these are really, really awesome. I've used these before on my BMW GS, the last GS I had. These are just fantastic foot pegs. Have a lot of adjustment, they're the perfect size, so looking forward to that. And then Anti-Gravity Batteries sent me their um, ATZ-10 lithium ion battery. This has more power than the factory battery and saves like probably about five pounds of weight, which is significant. Now that's the oil change kit, so when we get to 600 miles, we'll do that. Well, I'm doing a whole episode dedicated to maintenance and sort of living with the Transalp. Uh, the fire extinguisher, that's not one of the accessories, that's just a fire extinguisher. And uh, same thing with the tire gauge. So <laughs> anyway, um, let me get to work and maybe I'll do a time lapse or something, but I'm gonna, I think, start with the hand guards, the foot pegs, the battery, all the easy stuff, because I'm procrastinate with the hard stuff, right? Because the skid plate and the crash bars are gonna take a little bit more work. Tires, I'm gonna break out my Rabbit Honda tire changer from the closet and get to work on the tires. So it's Saturday night, it's seven o'clock, and uh, yeah, this is what I get to do Saturday night. It's actually pretty cool, right, that this is my job to do this, so. I almost forgot, I bent, uh, I turned my clutch lever into a pretzel in one of my little stunts there, dropping over the bike, so I put it in my bench vise here and I'm gonna just bending it. It's kind of a soft metal, so I'm bending it back into shape, then I'll put it back on the bike, and then we'll tackle the handguard. So, almost forgot about that step you know it's always like one more thing than you think right so i'm going to get this taken care of first the clutch lever just comes right off with one bolt it's no big deal to do that well while i was at it i decided to turn these into shorty levers so because i couldn't bend it exactly back how it was stock 
with my high-tech bending machinery here only the best for us you know um i just decided to make them both shorty so you can see here i just took my cutoff wheel and uh now i've got some little souvenirs here that we can i don't know put in your tank bag for good luck or something so no problem now let's get these handguards on a huge success with the bark buster vps handguards and the storm shields you can see you know everything fits perfectly almost like it's factory so what bark buster does is they really engineer this uh, with very tight tolerances so things fit perfectly around the controls you don't have any interference everything is mounted up super strong they're very easy the instructions are very clear and this is probably gosh you know the 10th set or something of bark busters i put on different bikes they're bike specific so you get new bar end weights and everything fits perfectly no interference with the throttle there's a little tiny washer in there to prevent that yeah super happy with those now we have some real good protection for our hands for our levers and for our handlebars and everything like that all right let's talk about foot pegs so these are the alt rider adventure 2 foot pegs i've got the factory peg off here i want you to notice the difference in platform size is pretty hysterical so that's the stock peg, and this is the alt rider peg. So you have about twice the surface area. <clears throat> this platform on the stock peg, there's no way that I could do any sort of extended off-road riding with that. It's way too small. My foot's going to get sore. I'm not going to have good control. So the alt rider peg is the perfect size, much bigger. You have the cleats that you screw in. You use Loctite. I've sh I'm showing you kind of how those go in there. The hardware that the alt rider includes their spacers their adjustments for the camber for the angle everything is just so perfectly dialed in so really really happy with these i'm going to go ahead and get these mounted up and kind of show you how they are when they're mounted on the motorcycle Here's the Alt Rider Adventure 2 foot pegs all mounted up. Now I ran into the tiniest fitment issue. It's not Alt Rider's fault, but so here's what happened. The Enduro foot pegs, the Honda accessory foot pegs for this bike are the same exact part number as for the Africa Twin 1100. So I assumed that they would be an identical mount, but I think the mount here, the frame bracket, is just the tiniest bit, like maybe a half a millimeter like narrower. And so I had to just bend this bracket just the tiniest bit to get these to fit properly. But they, they do work, um, but I'll, I'll work with Alt Rider to kind of sort that out to make sure they're aware of it. Um, because it's my fault, I told them it was the same and it's the tiniest, tiniest bit different. But maybe with the Honda foot pegs, because the spacer doesn't fit as tightly or whatever, you know, it's not an issue with those but it is with the aftermarket ones. But anyway, the point is, look at the platform, man. That is so, so nice. Let me show you from, kind of from here, you can see how much platform now I have for my foot. That's really, really nice. One of the awesome things, I mean, you can really geek out about these foot pegs, like totally nerd out because they have adjustable camber. The camber would be this angle here. So if you see that, camber would bring the, the foot peg up a little bit. So I have just a tiny bit of, of upward camber because I feel I feel like I have better support that way. I have the ones on my GS set up. I mean, what are the foot pegs? Do you get adjustable camber and you can adjust the height. So depending on where you put the spring and this, um, this little bracket here, you can bring the foot pegs up or down about 10 millimeters, about half an inch. So I have them in a low position for more leg room and that's a super awesome thing to be able to adjust the height. So kudos to Alt Rider on an amazing design with the foot pegs. All right, let's talk about batteries. The Honda ships, well, first of all, let me back up. The battery's under the seat. So you take the seat off with the key. Battery's right here, easy to access. Sadly, what's not here is the air filter. The air filter's up under here and that's a story for another time and it's not a good story um so the battery i mean being a honda you know they make things super easy to work on there's a toolkit under here your fuses speaking of fuses i want to see if there's an abs fuse that i can just pull um <clears throat> so the battery actually you can you can just kind of lift it out but you can see here there's a strap and then there's a couple cables so we're going to go ahead and swap this out we'll weigh this compared to the anti-gravity lithium and see how much weight we're saving 
Take a look at our stock battery. It's a uh, Uasa. It's a lead acid electrolyte filled battery. Uh, 9.1 amp hours, 109 cold cranking amps. But right here it says 12 volt, 8.6 amp hours. So I don't really know. But anyway, uh, it's heavy. The anti-gravity battery here. So you've got 360 cranking amps compared to 190. And then we've got 6.1 amp hours. Now that's misleading because you think, oh, that's less. But no, it's not really because you can use 100% of a lithium ion battery, recharge it, and you don't do damage to it. You can drain it down all the way and that's fine. But you can't do that with a, if you fully discharge this battery, it's basically going to be dead. It's not going to recharge. So you can use 100% of a lithium ion batteries. Um, let's see how much weight we're saving. So. The anti-gravity battery is 2.24 pounds. The stock boat anchor is 6.86 pounds. So that's a savings of a close to five pounds just in the battery there. And we're getting more power and more cranking amps. So it's a win-win. Plus you get these dual-sided posts on here. So you can uh, hook up more things easily without having to like stack a bunch of wires onto one battery terminal. I'm a big fan of these. so. Uh, yeah, we'll get this in the bike So this 10 amp fuse right here is the ABS main fuse because it says so on the little cover. Where did I put the cover? Um, and what it's I think this is gonna work because now I've got ABS flashing on the dash and but also the ride mode is flashing The bike starts and runs normally I need to take it and test ride it and see if the ABS is actually off and if it's gonna mess anything up with the bike like I don't know, the quick shifter or, or God knows what but that could possibly be a solution to getting the ABS to stay off when you cycle the key because right now it doesn't remember that the other battle is gonna be traction control but we'll have to fight that battle another day because I don't see where's that fuse cover here it is um, fuel pump backup ABS FSR fan TBW yeah, so I don't think, I don't see how we're going to do that for traction control. But the ABS, I think we might be onto something there. And you could potentially, if you could figure out this, where the which wires go to that fuse, put a, put a switch and wire a switch to the handlebar. Now that would be cool. So here's our battery installed done. The strap fits really tightly. No need for that. They give you like foam spacer blocks. You don't need those. They give you different bolts, different retainers. You don't need any of that stuff. I'll put the caps back on here. Let me do that now before I forget. So we've got a cap there and a cap there. So that's good. Um, fits really well. We've saved the weight. We've got, got more power. So no problem with the battery and make sure your terminals are tight. I like to wrench them down a little bit with a ratchet with a 10 millimeter um, socket, not just a screwdriver, the Phillips, cause it kind of slips. Make sure these are tight. Loose battery connections can cause a lot of issues. All right, I'm in the garage and doing some other stuff, trying to get the bike ready for the adventure rally next week. Let's go ahead and weigh the trans out to see if Honda's weight figure is, uh, well, how accurate it is or isn't. Um, so I've got the bike full of fuel, absolutely to the top of fuel, because I, I keep fuel at home here. Um, and uh, the only change is, I forgot to weigh the bike totally stock. I did add the hand guards and I did change the battery to the lithium battery. So. Those things probably cancel out. You save about three pounds there, maybe add about three pounds here. We should be within one or two pounds of the complete stock factory weight, stock tires, no protection on it or anything, no luggage. So I'm gonna roll it up onto my scales here, balance the bike, and then add these two together and that gives us an accurate weight. Okay, so how I do this is I make sure 100% of the bike's weight is going through the tires into the scales. So I balance this just so it wants to tip over the other way, so I have no pressure on the handlebar. I add together the two weights, so I've got 222 on the front, let's call it 223, and on the back I've got 228, let's give Let's give that 229. So 229 plus 222. So I'm tired and I'm not thinking right, but let me do that on a calculator. So I come up with 451 pounds, which is about seven pounds lighter than what Honda claims. 
Honda claims 458 pounds, I believe, wet. So, you know, a couple things, um, tiny, you know, tiny bit of correction and scale, maybe a couple pounds could be off. The battery saves a couple pounds, maybe that's it. But that's encouraging that the bike is weighing in less than what Honda quotes. So I'm really, really happy with that. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. All right, it's time we tackle the crash protection. So I'm super excited to get the bash plate on. You know, it doesn't look too bad. There's not a, too much hardware here. There's the bash plate. Here's the crash bars. I was expecting like a million bolts to fall out of the bag, you know, like some things are when you put them together. But actually, it's not too bad at all. And I'm... I'm I'm impressed. So I'm going to have to do this uh, following along their video instructions on their website. It's going to take me a little while. I'll take some video while I do it, maybe some time lapse, and uh, we'll see how this stuff works out. So we've got crash bars mounted. I really like how they mount using engine uh, mount locations where the frame and the engine join together. So very strong. You can see wrapping around up here, they have a brace under the headlight that also ties to the frame up inside here. Then they tie again to the frame up inside here with the engine mounts. They have a cross brace. So everything's tied together super strong. Everything is loose right now because I've still got to put the skid plate on. The skid plate and the crash bars go together. So you put the crash bars on first, leave all the mounting bolts loose, and then you start to work on the skid plate. So that's what we're going to do next. I did have a little trouble getting this to align, but there's some tension in the system where you kind of have to pry it a little bit to get the bolts to go in. Um, but once you kind of figure out how to do that, it's not really that big of a deal. So crash bars are looking good. I like the black. The Honda accessory crash bars are stainless steel, but I think with the black motorcycle, the crash, the black crash bars kind of look good. So uh, yeah, let's work on a skid plate next. All right, why am I on the ground? Well, a lot of you are worried about ground clearance and you've asked the question, you know, how much ground clearance are we going to lose when we put a skid plate on this bike? So I'm going to measure the factory ground clearance just on the side stand, just as a measure of comparison, right? So obviously the bike has less clearance when you sit on it and everything sags, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to measure how much we lose by adding the skid plate. So I'm going to take my tape measure and measure to basically the lowest point of the engine or exhaust, see what we have, and then we can do this again after we have the skid plate and kind of see, you know, what happened. So the exhaust is really the low point. Um, it's a little bit lower. There's a thing that sticks down on the engine, but the exhaust actually is a little bit lower. So I'm going to try to get the lowest measurement I can get here. It's right about to the bottom of this heat shield, no matter how I measure it, is right about 10 inches, maybe 10 and an eighth. Yeah, that. Well, this, because this is at an angle, but this is the lowest point. This is actually lower. All right, so now we're going to put on the skid plate and see how that changes. All right, well, you can see that, <clears throat> excuse me, the skid plate mounting bracket, which seems to use like the, there's a factory mounting point for probably a skid plate or a factory crash bars right there. And you can see the bracket has to go below the exhaust. So you can see that, we are going to lose maybe, I don't know, a half inch of clearance here. But I mean, what choice do you have? You have to put the skid plate underneath all this so that when something hits a skid plate, it's not, you know, hitting and bending all the stuff under here. But it looks like it's going to be a good half inch or three quarter inch below this, uh, this sort of protrusion on the bottom of the oil pan or the oil sump of the engine. So that's good. But we'll get this mounted up and we'll show you how everything looks. So what I like about this skid plate, so now we're all mounted up and everything is tight, all right? The whole crash protection system is in place and tightened down. Things line up pretty well, actually. I've done a lot of these types of things over the years. Sometimes it can be a little frustrating getting things to line up, but you know, it really went fairly well. Um, the thing I like about the skid plate is it's mounted to frame mounting points so that it does not mount at all to the engine or anything. So it's got, it actually mounts to uh, these cross braces up here, which are part of the crash bar system, which do mount into engine mounts. And then it's, I mean, sorry, uh, yeah, well, engine and frame mounting points. And then this uh, rear mounting set up here. And then underneath, you've got these flush um, Allen head bolts. So to do an oil change, you're going to have to remove those two bolts and then four bolts at the back. There's one on the other side there you can't see. 
and you can drop it so it should be you should be able to drop it in a couple minutes to do your oil change so good mounting points because you're not uh, compromising your engine if you were to hit something in terms of like you know transferring that force into the engine now the big test is we have to measure the ground clearance to see what we have so we measured make sure the bike's pushed all the way over on the side stand we measured about uh 10 inches before so let's see what we come up with this time i measure under the exhaust so yeah, if I measure at the same point where I was measuring before, right under that exhaust shield, I've got about nine and a half. So it seems like maybe we lost about a half inch of ground clearance, but what choice do you have? Because you've got to do, I mean, you can't let this engine and exhaust be sitting here off road. You've got to protect it. So let's, let's do something. Let's, cause I want to compare it to my KTM. Let me measure right in the middle of the skid plate, the center point and see. So that's about nine. No, about eight and three quarters if I measure to the center of the skid, skid plate with the bike on the side stand. I'm going to compare it to my KTM real quick. So here's my KTM 890 Adventure R with the AXP skid plate. Let's measure to the center. Okay, so the center of the skid plate, 11 inches. So yeah, that's a uh, pretty massive difference in ground clearance, but that's kind of what you expect. All right, it's time to do some hard work, so we're gonna change the tires. So to remove the front wheel on the Transalp, um, pretty simple stuff. You've got a 22 millimeter uh, axle nut. You have to remove one of the brake calipers to give you clearance to pull the tire out. That's a, a 12 millimeter um, socket. And then you have a 10 millimeter socket for the pinch bolts on the axle. Um, yes, they are tube tires, which makes them more difficult to change, to deal with, to fix flats. We'll talk more about that in a dedicated segment. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this tire off, this wheel off for now, get it on the Rabiconda here, and uh, get the Dunlop tire installed and take off, uh, take off the factory tire. the famous tube tires so I think dealing with tubes comes down to your experience with them or not so if you have like a dirt biking background or some dual sport riding you've changed tires with tubes even stuff with like bicycles right I mean tubes are uh, an additional step an additional pain to deal with the thing that people struggle with that we all do is you know getting the tube in here i really should have put this tube in the tire before i put the tire on the rim i just forgot to do it or, i mean i still have one bead off but i uh, usually put it on before that um <clears throat> it helps kind of get the valve stem in you know getting the valve stem through the hole and then getting the tire levered on without pinching the tube i mean what i do you know i use plenty of talcum powder baby powder and i have a little bit of pressure you can see how much pressure i have in the tube just a tiny bit just to give it shape so that when i lever the tire on if i do get near that tube it won't be as likely to pinch the tube so usually i'm able to do it without pinching it but we'll see how it goes so i'm going to go ahead and keep working on this and uh report back Time to balance the tire before we remount it so i use the tusk uh, balancing stand i'll link this below i'll link everything in this video below here in the comments and the description <coughs> really affordable i like to balance the tire it really gives a much smoother ride you can see they did balance it from the factory however these weights had already come loose so they didn't do a very good job tightening that down which is surprising for honda usually they don't miss stuff like that but we'll go ahead and we'll find a heavy spot we'll balance it out with some weights 
and then we'll be able to remount the tire. In terms of you know getting the tube in and everything and inflated, actually this was about as easy as it gets. Um, the front tires are easier because it's less stiff and it's just a little bit easier to work with. Um, but yeah, it was no problem getting that mounted up with the tube. Okay, we have a new front tire mounted, balanced, everything retorqued, set up properly. A couple things I want to show you. I already showed you the balancing truing or balancing stand. <clears throat> I really like this Tuss tire gauge. It has, you know, it's just so easy to use, and it's got a little deflator nozzle too to let a pressure out, and it holds the pressure here. So I'll link that below as well. But another cool uh, tool that I rely on every day from Tusk, and I'll link the Rabaconda too uh, in the links below. You know, I've really, I've had this a few years now. I paid my own money for it. I didn't get sponsored for this. And it saved me so much money over the years doing all my own tire changes. So I definitely recommend it. They have a street bike version now, which you should probably look into if you're doing mostly adventure and street bikes. Uh, that's probably the one I would get. But when I bought this, they didn't have that version. So this is actually the dirt bike version. But it works for bikes like this um, just fine. All right, removing the rear wheel on the trans up. Obviously, you need to lift the bike off the ground. I'm in the garage, so I'm using a motorcycle a jack. It's a 27 millimeter socket or wrench, and then they use a self-locking, um, I don't know what, what the technical term for this kind of nut, but it's a self-locking nut, right? So it has tension. When you put it on, you can't really see it has tension on it, so you have to use a tool. Um, so that's good. And then you've got the, the blocks for the chain adjusters, the actual block switch, and a nut that comes out. But it's a pretty basic arrangement, right? So pull the axle out, get the chain off the sprocket, and then kind of wiggle the um break you know the brake disc out of the caliper pull the wheel off i'll do a little time lapse here because i need both hands to uh, do what i'm doing and i can't hold the camera um, and then of course i'm doing this to get the tire changed out kind of making two videos at once here you know get multiple uses right um so yeah pretty simple bike to work on which i think people are going to appreciate So after I remove the rear wheel on the Transalp, you can see there's a couple spacers. There's a large like flange spacer on the sprocket side, and then there's a small spacer on the brake disc side. The brake disc, disc caliper kind of comes out and loose when you remove the wheel. In terms of the sprocket, so it does have a rubber cush drive. So these are a wear item. These, um, you know, every like probably 20,000 miles or something, you've got to replace these. These go, these fit in here um, like this. And what they do is they dampen the you know the engine power going into the drive line and the sprocket to give you a smoother acceleration and they help you know preserve parts and stuff because it dampens all the motion and torque of, of that from the engine so cush drive hub of course which you expect so that's easy to deal with we'll leave these all out here so that when i do the tire change i don't have you know things falling out and getting lost and stuff like that and then you know you've got your 18 inch rim with a tube the rear is definitely going to be more of a pain to change uh, because they're just harder with the rears than the front, but we'll go ahead and get that done now. So when doing a tube tire change, this is one method I use a lot of the time, not every time, depending on kind of the rim and the tire. But see how I've got the tube already just in the tire. Now it's barely inflated, just enough to sort of hold its shape, let a tiny bit more out. And I've got it really uh, <coughs> covered in uh, baby powder to help things move around. And so we'll, we'll gently, you know, get this on the rim and, and get the valve stem lined up, get the valve stem through. It can be kind of hard sometimes to get the tube in the tire if you already put one of the beads uh, over the rim and, you know, line things up and then, you know, getting things folded up if you don't have air in the tube. So that's what I like to do. But again, yeah, dealing with tubes is an extra pain in the butt that it would have been nice to just have tubeless tires, obviously, but...
Well, who can tell me what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> I put the tire on backwards. Oh my God, wasn't I just talking about this a minute ago? So I put it on a balancing stand and I'm looking at it. I'm like, huh, the brake disc's on the wrong side. Well, <laughs> I put the darn thing on reverse. I didn't pay attention. Oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. Now I got it because it took a while to get the bead seated, high pressure, had to lubricate the bead, do the tube. Now I got to pull everything off and do it all again. So I just, I'm going to take a deep breath, realize that mistakes happen and do this again. I guess it'll be good practice. So here's a note, always pay double check, triple check that when you're mounting it up, that you have the rotation in the right direction, because now I cost myself another 45 minutes of wasted of extra work. So putting the rear tire back on the bike or the rear wheel, I should say, I noticed the axle, it didn't have any grease on it. There was grease on the front axle. Um, so anyway, if you see this, it's just kind of something to note that you could have corrosion issues and rust. So grease this up before we put it back in. The challenge with doing these types of bikes with the rear wheels is always trying to get, you're, you're fighting the brake caliper um, with the disc and the two spacers on each side and the chain and the axle all at the same time trying to line that up without you know the uh, axle um, spacers falling out or something. So it's always kind of a bit of a cuss fest to sometimes get that lined up, especially the first time you do it, so. So to adjust the chain tension on the trans alp, really pretty easy to do. You have a 27 millimeter axle nut here, loosen that. Then you've got a lock nut here. I think that's a 13. This is a 10 for the adjuster bolt. It backs in or out into the swing arm and then you can tension your chain. And you have adjustment lines, adjustment marks here. <clears throat> you can see on both sides. So the axle has like a, uh, the, the bolt, the axle head, head of the axle bolt has like this, um, you know cut on it or face or whatever it slides into that um, Plate and then this is your chain tensioning system. So overall, it's a really simple setup taking the wheel off and on I just did for the tire changes simple I mean lifting everything up to without the spacious falling out. That's always a little bit of a frustration It took me maybe you know four five minutes or so to get that done I'm gonna go ahead and take some time to kind of clean up this chain the factory grease kind of attracted a bunch of dirt and sand so I'm gonna clean that up with some WD-40 and uh and then move on. This is like one of those TV shows where they're like, we're gonna give you a total makeover. Actually, it's pretty awesome. I have to say like, this bike's really coming together. I usually don't like black bikes, but kind of looks pretty cool with this, the black crash bars, the better tires, I mean, foot pegs. It's starting to look mean, like, you know, an actual adventure bike, right? I'm really liking this new look and these tires look nice and meaty so that's gonna be nice and then I've got a Sidisi dry bag on the back I'll link to that below I've got the Tusk Olympus tank bag the small version here it just fit I had a bunch of tank bags probably eight different tank bags that one fit really well on the bike the bark busters with the storm guards the outback crash bars the outback skid plate Dunlop front tire I also what else did I do? Oh yeah, the Alt-Rider foot pegs course, gotta mention those. And I threw on my Puig deflector to test this out. I think it's gonna work really well on this bike to really help quiet it down and you can adjust the airflow there. I need to throw on a phone mount cause I'm going to a rally and I need some navigation and stuff like that. But man, let me know what you guys think. This thing looks ready for adventure. I mean, yeah, we still kind of have this down low and we need to work on maybe improving the suspension, doing a few more things, but what a transformation, what a huge improvement. The only thing left to do now is go ride. I appreciate you hanging in, in there with me for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Check out all the products with the links below and uh, support, you know, support businesses that you believe in to make good products. That's all I can say. So um, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. There's a lot more Transalp content coming soon. This is just 
what is this episode three i think yeah this is just the third episode out of probably eight or nine at least so make sure to stay tuned we're definitely going to be riding in the next few episodes a lot more other than being in the garage uh, but yeah i'm super excited this bike's really turning out well thanks for being there on this journey uh, if you want to support big rock moto there's ways to do that down below other than that please ride safe and i'll see you out there